For the next 24 hours, I will be stranded at sea in this life raft. I just heard gunshots go off. I didn't think it would go this bad. This is an eight person survival raft. This is something that you would have on a large boat or a small yacht. The raft came in a hard shell case. It was all packed in there really tight and it had its own air bottle. So when you put it in the water and pull the rip cord, this raft actually inflates itself to a huge size. Look at this guys. What do you think? Still smells like rubber and must pretty bad. When I first deployed this raft, it smelled so bad that I couldn't spend five minutes in here. I got in here and I immediately got seasick between the smell and the rocking. It was just absolutely terrible. Over here we've got a cuit. A cuit. I'm not sure what that means, but this is like a survival ring. Uh, we've got this. I think this is a water catcher or a toilet. So if you're in here for a week, you know, you're gonna have to be going to the bathroom a lot. So you can go in here and then go ahead and, you know, dump it outside. First impressions of the raft is it's a pretty good size. Like if you went and bought a very large tent, I mean, that's the size of this thing on the inside. For being 30 years old, it's uh, pretty impressive actually. If you were to use this raft out in the ocean in an emergency situation, once it inflates, you're gonna find this bag inside of the raft and it's full of emergency goodies that you would be really happy to have. Look at this, paddles. These things look kind of look like a joke actually. So you'd have to hang out on the outside of the raft and just paddle like that. Next, we've got shootable flares. Point them up, pop this uh, cord or twist this, and this is gonna shoot a flare way up in the air. Life raft fishing kit. The hooks look good after 30 years. They look very sharp. First aid kit. It's all sealed up pretty good still. A rubber tourniquet, a wire splint, aspirin tablets, eye flush solution. Oh, drinking water. Four ounce bags, 125 milliliters. Fresh water, probably gonna be the most important thing you need to survive. It doesn't smell very plasticky at all. It actually tastes really good. I'm thinking it's totally pure. It doesn't taste like plastic at all, which is incredible for 10 year old water. I knew this was very old. I bought this off the marketplace. Honestly, I probably overpaid for it. Really, this thing is probably trash. It's really not valuable to anyone because no one's going to certify it. But I spent the hundred bucks. It was worth it to me. It's a ton of fun. The bed feels just like a water bed or something. If I can figure out a way to ventilate this place better, I think it'll be pretty nice. This is my survival bag here. I did bring, these are mountain house um, dried foods. Uh, this is lasagna, but I've got lasagna. I've got beef stew in here. So a lot of interesting meals. They are uh, freeze dried meals. This is what we're gonna be eating today, tonight, tomorrow morning for the next 24 hours. The instructions say to add two cups of boiling water and I have no way of boiling water out here. I'm gonna take one of these bottles and I'm gonna figure out a way to, to stash it out here and hopefully we can get the bottle hot enough to uh, rehydrate the food. I'm gonna take some of this line and figure out a way to tie off the water bottle. So let's do that. Let's take about two foot of line. Again, very careful with my knife because if I puncture this raft, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. Point right here, there's a rope which runs all the way around the raft. And you know, I'm just gonna tie it like this. It's not great, but it will be in the sun and the bottle should start warming up if we get more sunlight up here. Okay, there we go, DIY solar heater. I don't really know how to make a fire in the raft here to heat up water. I didn't really plan for that at all. This is the freeze dried lasagna. Ooh, it does smell good. Let's just add this in here. Looks kind of gross, but it smells incredible. It has a good flavor to it. It still feels a little crunchy, like it didn't rehydrate all the way. But just something like this, fill up your stomach, make you feel happy. I think it's really gonna boost your spirits and really make you feel like you can survive. We're running out of daylight, probably only got an hour before sunset. 
We do have reflective strips on here, but you know, there is boat traffic around here. So I've got this white light to put on top, just a white LED light. That's gonna go on top and on the outside of the raft, I'm gonna hang a couple of glow sticks. Here we go. There are some storm clouds way out in the distance there. Probably a dark night, a uh, lot of overcast skies, so probably not much moon and stars. Look at way out there, the cruise ship's going out, going to the Bahamas. Look at that beautiful, beautiful sunset out there. The cruise ship just went by. Here comes a rogue wave. I don't know if you can see it. Look at that. Just nailed that houseboat. Beef stew. And look at that in there. I don't know if you can see all that. I wish Mountain House would have put like a really big warning on the front of the package saying, warning, you need heat to cook this. I don't think it's the best survival food because what if you don't have enough water? What if you can't heat your water? It actually smells pretty good. I mean, those are some beautiful chunks of carrot, peas, potatoes, beef. Mmm. Fantastic flavor. Because something like this, with a good flavor, reminds you of home, that could boost your spirits and really get you through a tough time. I was a little bit nervous as night was falling because there were a lot of really big, big clouds up ahead. Um, but the clouds cleared out and it's just awesome right now. The only bummer is the mosquitoes have come out. So the wind keeps the mosquitoes away, the wind let up, and now the mosquitoes are out and they are biting me. I didn't think the mosquitoes would find me all the way out here, but sure enough they have. So I'm getting bit up pretty bad right now. Look at this here. That right there, that is a blood stain. There's huge mosquitoes in here. I smacked them and a bunch of blood came out. That means those mosquitoes are just biting me up. I'm gonna try some fishing now at nighttime. I'm gonna change up my strategy. I'm gonna use some of that beef stew as bait, but I'm gonna put it on this little crab. Check that out. I got the little crab, little weighted crab. That's a good rig. Crab with some beef. Okay. Oops, let me shut the light off. Whoa! Are we on? Yo, we're on. Oh my gosh! We did it! Let's go! Let's see if I can bring this fish in without dropping him. Look at that. <laughs> Check it out, guys. We got a nice catfish. So, uh, yeah, we're in business, baby. We're catching fish. And if we had some way to make a fire, I could definitely fillet him up and he would make a really, really nice dinner. See you later. Fishing with a crab and a little bit of beef from the beef stew worked awesome. It was probably less than 60 seconds and I hooked up on that fish. Heard the drag starting to run on the reel and I didn't even know what was happening because it happened that fast. This stuff is incredible. It tastes good and it catches fish too. Let's see if we got another piece of beef in here. We're just gonna do the same thing we did last time. So I cast it out there and I've got the drag set really loose on the reel. Here we go. Oh, we're on, we're still on again. It's another cat. This one's a little bit bigger. Oh, whoa, 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 he's flashing the camera. Look at him. This one's actually, this one's actually pretty good. This one's a fighter, look at him. This is a nice big one. This one here would make a pretty good meal, I think. He's uh. Yeah, this thing way pretty good. Good fish, awesome. All right, well guys, we know, whoa. All right, let me let this one go. There we go. So we know the water is loaded with catfish because literally it takes probably 30 seconds to catch a fish using the beef stew. So I'm gonna say the Mountain House beef stew is an awesome uh, piece of survival gear because it tastes fantastic, you can eat it. 
and the fish love it too so you can catch some fish with it so that was really cool guys i'm super stoked i'm so glad that we caught some fish so anyway i'm gonna put the fishing rod away for now because we can probably catch a bunch more of those fish but i've got no way of cooking them right now um i'm gonna pull out the night vision camera we'll take a look around in night vision so this is a camera i bought specially for this video this is a little handheld camcorder but the cool thing about this is it's got night vision in it i can have it pitch dark in here and i can record so it's going to give you guys uh, a really good feel of what I'm going through out here in the in the darkness out here in this raft. This is the night vision camcorder. So if it looks a little bit weird, it's because it's filming in infrared. So I've got all the lights off inside of the life raft. So that's probably why my eyes look dilated. There's the boat. And there is the city over there far off in the distance. Now, all I've got for a bed here is just a towel. So I am just going to be laying on the towel for tonight. This rubber is like, I don't know, it's like a little bit itchy. It just, it's not comfortable to lay down on. So I got the towel here. So let me kick back right here. I am keeping my life jacket on, you know, just for extra safety. I'm out here all alone. So I really do want to play it safe. If someone was trying to steal the boat and I had to jump in the water really quick and stop them, or if somehow the life raft got punctured and it started to go down, I mean, I just want this life vest on. All right, guys, good night. I'll see you in the morning. I just heard gunshots go off. It was like three gunshots. Pop, pop, pop. Pretty fast like that. Now, I don't know how close it was. Um, we've got the port in the city over that direction, and then out front there, there is a bunch of boats that are moored up, and there's some really sketchy people that live on the boats, so I can't tell if the gunshots came from the boats or from the city, but I definitely am going to check the news in the morning and hear if there's any, uh, incidents that happened tonight, but yeah, that, uh, that kind of woke me up out of my sleep. That was concerning you know this is uh this is an urban area and um you know you never know what's going to happen around here that's why we need to do this offshore next time and not so close to the city but yeah gunshots never expected to hear that on my 24 hour survival raft challenge i am not getting any sleep at all i don't know if you can hear that but the wind picked back up and so that means the waves picked up and it's all choppy and it's sloshing around and it's making a bunch of noise and my head bouncing around so i'm not getting any sleep at all and this is just not fun now i'm really 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 ready for this to be over think about cutting this short just packing everything up and going home But I did say this was going to be a 24 hour challenge, so I'm going to try and stick it out a little while longer. Alright, hopefully I'll see you in the morning. It's about 3.30 in the morning, and the wind's picked up. It's getting really, really cold. It's getting really foggy and overcast out there, too. Um, I'm just getting really chilled and I can't sleep. I didn't put enough air in the floor, so there's not enough separation between me and the water below, and it's just like sleeping on a cold pack. It's just totally miserable. I'm so ready for this to be over. I'm really thinking about just leaving the raft here and just driving, uh, taking a boat and going back to my car and just going home for the rest of the night. This is not fun at all. I'm really not enjoying this uh, survival video. But anyway, this totally sucks. Anyway. This is not fun. Yeah. Anyway, this isn't fun, but uh, anyway, I didn't think it would go this bad, um, but I'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's starting to get bright out there. Let's go take a look at the sunrise. Got really, really rough. Look at that, it's so overcast. Wow, look at that, it's totally gray and overcast out. Oh, it's kind of wet too. 
So that's the east back there. That's where the sunrise should be. And you can't even see it. It's totally gray and overcast. <sighs> and it's cold. Oh man, that's why I got so cold last night. Terrible night's sleep. I really, I didn't bring enough warm gear with me. I should have brought a jacket or a sleeping bag or something better. Got really cold and chilled. The wind picked up at one point. It got really rough and choppy. Uh, just a terrible night's sleep. Very bad experience, but um, yeah. It, I guess we must have had a front come through because look at this. This is totally gray and overcast, but um, we need to get the water out. We need to get the freeze dried food out and get some breakfast going. And hopefully get a good breakfast going. That'll lift our spirits. <sighs> get us going for the rest of the day. One of the last freeze dried foods, we got beef stroganoff with noodles. Doesn't sound like a great breakfast. Or we've got chicken teriyaki. I say we go with chicken teriyaki, it sounds fantastic right now. I was such a bad sleep last night. First, the gunshot woke me up. Then, what was next? Uh, the wind kicked in. It was bouncing around. It was just one thing after another last night. Terrible sleep. So I could really go for a good meal right now and really lift my spirits up. Oh, this one's terrible. The taste isn't very good. It's got some very weird spices in it. And the texture's just terrible. It's kind of crunchy because it really hasn't rehydrated well. It's just, ugh, ugh. This chicken teriyaki is disgusting. I'm gonna move the raft to another area. This was a beautiful sailboat in its day. It's pretty big, probably 35, 40 feet. Look at the helm back there. That's where you steer it from. The GPS is on there. It's all busted up. It's got these two really big masts on it for the sail. And you know, it looks like it uh, it's ran aground in about four feet of water, tipped over and flooded. What a shame. All right, I'm gonna put the gloves on. Let's go take a look at this boat. Let's get a closer look at it. See what we got going on here. Oh, oh come on, there we go. All right. So first off, check out this ship's wheel. This is really, really cool. I love how it's wrapped in the rope like this. It looks so old school, really cool. Old, old Garmin GPS, totally smashed up. There's nothing good on there. Take a look in there. That looks like the exhaust hose down in there. We've got the compass in there. Uh, now the compass is no good either. It's flooded out also. Um, let's see what we got going on inside of here. Lots of steel cables up here. Very big uh, hazard here, hazard to navigation. This is uh, dangerous to other boats out here. Hazard to navigation, it's a big problem out here. There's a lot of people that bring their boats out here and dump them, or they come out and live on their boats and they don't maintain them, and they end up sinking like this. Uh, look at that. Some type of bilge pump there, some bolt cutters in there. Look at that cabin in there, guys. Ooh. That looks interesting. Uh, there's the mast right there. Oh, that's the boom, sorry, that's the boom. And the sail is usually wrapped up on that. And then you can raise it and spread the sail out up there. Let's go look at the name of this boat. Oh, Hummingbird? I think that's the depth finder. Okay, look at this. Look at all this hardware. Sailboats have so much hardware on them. That's why they're so hard to maintain. So look at this, this sticker got put here by law enforcement. That means that they identified it as a potential hazard and basically it's litter out here in the water and it needs to be removed. Now take a look here, it's a 1980 40 foot yacht. Very interesting and the name of the boat is, can't tell, can't really read it, but it says Pensacola. So it was, the owner must have been from Pensacola, Florida. And look at this, look at all the barnacles growing on the bottom. So not being maintained very well at all. Is that a solar panel? Yeah, there's solar panels up there. Wow. 
What a shame this yacht got wrecked like this. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Please give it a like and please subscribe to the channel and let me know where you want me to go on the next ocean adventure. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you out there in the water.